Are you fat and or sick as well as frustrated? As you can see from the thumbnail, I was that way just two years ago. That before picture was taken April of 2022. The after picture was taken February of this year. A little less than two years. No, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm better than I have been. So we'll talk about that today. But first, an introduction. I'm Chip. This channel is CP59 Fit, Unconventional Healthy Living Strategies. And today I'm going to explain why I picked the title or subtitle, Unconventional Healthy Living Strategies, and how that can help you, if you choose to join me, not be fat or sick and frustrated anymore. And it's not really any of our faults. We listen to the advice of the day, the medical professionals, who shared what they were taught. And that's part of my unconventional healthy living strategies is that unfortunately, most of the medical professionals are not as educated as you can be yourself if you just do some research. As you can tell, two years ago, or even more so, four years ago, I, I was obese and <laughs> I'm just under it today. Uh, healthy living is like a roller coaster, or I should say healthy weight loss is like a roller coaster. You go up some days, you go down other days, and it's all in our control, which is the good thing. <laughs> Indeed it is. In fact, I've got notes on a notebook and on my WhatsApp on my phone. So if I look down, I'm reading what I'm supposed to say next. Even though I don't have it scripted, I do have a few bullet points I'd like to go over. Maybe I should state first why, why I am on this channel and what I hope to achieve. So I have down here, who is this channel for? Question mark. I help meta metabolically unhealthy people overcome disease to get metabolically healthy. And you may say, what the hell is metabolically healthy? We don't talk in terms like that. And it's probably, if I put this in the um, readability thing, it would probably say that's like a 10th grade word or a 12th grade word. And all the advisors say I'm supposed to speak on a fifth grade level because then everybody can understand it. So what the hell is metabolic health? It's you getting fat, basically, if you're unmetabolically healthy, because what is metabolism? Metabolism, or what do we think metabolism is? We think metabolism slows down as we get older, so therefore we think it's fast when we're young. That's why we think young people are thinner, healthier, you know, we could define lots of terms here. Metabolism, metabolic health, uh, insulin resistance, insulin sensitivity, glucose, uh, even just the terms like health and aging. I have a friend that unfortunately has developed type 2 diabetes as she has gotten older. I have several friends that have developed type 2 diabetes as they have gotten older. That is a problem of being metabolically unhealthy. So uh, I'm trying to tone, dumb down the language on this channel, but today might have to be a little bit higher level to actually get my point across. So let me read some more. Oh, I rewrote it so I could read it better. Because <laughs> you know, my handwriting is, I could be a medical doctor, but I never went that route. And I am not a medical doctor, so don't take this as medical advice. This is my experience that I'm sharing with you. I help metabolically unhealthy people overcome disease by improving metabolic health. And you notice I said disease instead of disease, because most of what we call dis diseases today are really just results of being unhealthy metabolically. We need to really think about what the common denominator is in all of modern civilizations. Disease. <laughs> that can be type 2. I've mentioned some type 2 diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, which we call hypertension, 
stenosis, which we call arteri arterial sclerosis. That's when you get, oh, the, the common word is hardening of the arteries. <laughs> you may hear Maisie out there whining. I put her in the crate so she's not trying to bust the door down or get run over by the shark. The shark vacuum cleaner <laughs> might hit the door also. They have one here and it runs every day at about noon, which I'll tell you, today is Wednesday. I gotta get back up. Wednesday, June 26, 2024. So that after picture was actually four years ago and I've probably gained a little bit of weight since then. I'm getting ready to really clamp down on July 1st and do what I know I need to do because I am not as healthy as I have been or could be. Let's see what else I got written down here. Okay, I developed this YouTube channel, or I, I work on this YouTube channel of unconventional health, healthy living strategies, basically to change your life, which in turn means that I have to continue to change mine, which is probably when I should have brought up that I'm getting very strict on July 1st, because that's when I'm actually, well, June 30th, I guess, is actually when I'm launching this 10 week series to get this channel monetized with the alternate channel of getting to a healthy weight. And the whole thing here is about health. It's not about looking good in a bathing suit. It's not be about being an Instagram model because this channel's demographics are generally older people. Okay, and that's all I got in that page. <laughs> I gotta go to the phone. And what I mean by older is probably 50 and above that have thought that their metabolism has slowed down, and that may be accurate, it may not, but you know, there are many things you can do to change it. And uh, one thing I have relearned, or I'm sorry, realized, actually last night I was on a Zoom call with Dr. Chafee, the plant-free MD in uh, Perth, Australia, and I met him in Denver in February of 2023. So between those two pictures, when I went to my first low carb conference put on by Dr. Jeffrey Gerber, who is also a very, uh, well, a very good low carb, healthy fat doctor. But Dr. Chafee brought up a good point. You know, so many med medical professionals, doctors, nutritionists, how nutritionists even get to be called that is beyond me are either ignorant or mean <laughs> in the way they go about discrediting doctors that have learned a little bit more than them. And he brought up uh, Gary Fetke, who is also in Australia and was a surgeon. And many surgeons have to chop off limbs because of type two diabetes. He got a little tired of that once he realized that that could be reversed through food. So he told a few patients, I don't know exactly what he told them, but basically along the lines of, you know, if you cut out the carbs, you might not have to lose your t toes or your arm or your foot or your leg or whatever he was having to cut off. And you know, cause it gets gangrene, it dies, your blood flow restricts when you get too much sugar. And the, it's never been exactly proven, but his wife has launched a YouTube channel uh, to discredit some of his discreditors. And it's basically understood that it was the Australian Nutrition or Dietitian Council that filed the medical complaint about him because sometimes when you're not doing well, you go to dietitians or nutritionists as you go to your doctor. Sometimes your doctor recommends you go to a nutritionist. And then those, can't say that word on YouTube, those slime balls actually file a complaint against your doctor for trying to help you because it doesn't go along with their policy. And you know how policies are made? They're made by people, by the almighty dollar, whether it's Australian dollar, US dollar, or the Yuan in China. Doctors today, unfortunately, in general, uh, prescribe to the dollar, prescribe to the big pharma company, which individuals can't fight very well. Well, we can, I'm about to tell you that, and that's why I am on an unconventional channel and, uh, but anyway, Dr. Chafee's comments were basically that we need to start from the ground up. So I've refined my, uh, motto, uh, 
slogan, slogan a little bit to say, unconventional health, healthy living, or this channel, is a grassroots, bottom-up movement to retake control of our health. I'm a few steps ahead of you by research and experience and experiments, but I invite you to join me on this journey. And what do I mean by I'm a few steps ahead of you? Like I said, I went to a low-carb conference in February 2023. I went to the Collaborative Science Conference, which was basically a low-carb conference in February of 2024 in Las Vegas. I renewed a lot of friendships with doctors that I had met in Denver, met some new ones. In fact, that's where the picture, the after picture was. That was actually a picture with Dr. Jamie Seaman, who is a OBGYN, who realized that not being low carb had affected her immensely in trying to conceive when she was younger. Fortunately, she has uh, been able to reverse that. And that's another thing that unconventional healthy living strategies will do for you. They will reverse things that people tell you are not reversible, like uh, arthritis, like joint pain, hip pain, body pain. Many, uh, this is a anecdotal evidence because I'm not a doctor, I don't do research papers, but many people that do do research papers like Dr. Eric Westman and people that submit stuff to journals like Dr. Paul Mason, Dr. Anthony Chafee have all had numerous patients that have been able to reduce just general body pain by going lower carb. And that's how I have lost the, we'll say 30 pounds because I did lose 60 pounds, but then in my mother's illness and death, I have packed on it 30 of those pounds. So I'm officially down 30 pounds. I've been down 40 pounds twice and I made videos on those. I never got a video made at 60 pounds because that's when I got the email that uh, we were considering hospice for my mother. Anyway, let's go up to a few things. Oh, uh, the next thing was what I was just talking about, addressing science and studies you may hear on the news or the internet. And you know, most of them are gonna say, Harvard scientists, Harvard professors came up with this. Maybe you ought to look into Harvard and see whether you wanna believe that or not. They, of course, they are well-funded. They have this big school of epidemiology, which in nutrition science, probably isn't even science. You know what epidemiology is? It's a survey. Okay, Carol, how many eggs did you eat last year? How many pounds of steak did you eat? How many green beans did you eat? How many boxes of pop, micro, bags of microwave popcorn? So there's a very famous nurses study where they sent a survey to nurses once a year and asked them what they ate the last year. Okay, so Harvard takes all these surveys, and I don't know if they did the nurses one, but they do lots of surveys. And they put it all in this computer database, and you know, after they ask you what you eat, they ask you, what did you go to the doctor for this year? Do you have cancer? Do you have hypertension? Do you have stress? And they put all this in a computer, and then when somebody wants a study on, does green beans cause cancer? They type in whatever they want to type in, and out of, out, of, out of these questionnaires that individuals' memory is supposed to fill out, nobody keeps track of how many eggs they ate in a year, how many glasses of milk, how many ounces of milk, how many ounces of red meat, how many ounces of vegetables. But anyway, these, this computer algorithm comes up with, well, 50 people that ate green beans got cancer last year, so green beans cause cancer. That's not a cause, that's a correlation. But once it hits the mainstream media and the nightly news, green beans cause cancer, green beans cause cancer. Because somebody said they ate green beans and they said they got cancer. That is not science, you know, and I have gotten to the point where I would almost rather trust uh, an antidotes, antidotal evidence, i.e. my friend that I know was needing a knee replacement, went low carb, and now she doesn't need it. I mean, Dr. Chafee is a surgeon, also Dr. Baker is a surgeon. In fact, Dr. Baker got his medical license threatened because he was telling patients in Colorado. So we'll bring this to the US. And this was about four years ago, five years maybe. One of his competing doctors 
I, I don't know the whole story. He tells it on YouTube. I've watched it, but I, I would probably get it wrong to repeat it. But basically, he was costing his practice, his corporate practice that he was part of money because he was getting people healthy and not having to replace their joints. So never ever doubt that big medicine or the healthcare system, as we call it in Virginia, in uh, the United States, should be called the sickness industry, not the healthcare, is all about the bottom line. And if you're not doing surgery, you're not making money. In fact, I heard Dr. Westman say, he's in the money losing <laughs> part of Duke hospitals because the surgeons make the money, but they send the patients to him to get them into the right range weight wise so that they can actually do the surgery because you can't do surgery on a lot of obese people especially like knee replacement or hip replacement well first you got to get through all that obesity to find the joint and then it's just a low risk that it will be successful so you have to be under a certain weight to have some of these surgeries and i actually do feel kind of bad that i have learned so much over the last few years that if Miss Alice, that I helped care for and was a companion to for many years in Texas, and my mother just last year, that if I'd known some of this stuff, their last days may have been higher quality. I won't say it would have helped them live longer. It could have, but starting younger, I do believe that getting healthy will help you live longer. And why do we try to get healthy? Basically to live a better life, to have a better quality of life, to enjoy life more to not break when we fall down when we're old. And I'll do a, bo a body by science video on that, which encourages everybody. I mean, it's a system. It was a system designed for osteo osteopenia and osteoporosis women to be able to lift weights and not break because it does build your bone structure as well as muscle. And the main reason you don't like um, sarcopenia, which another big word, sorry, muscle wasting as you get older is because that muscle protects the bones when you fall. And most older people do fall. So that's one reason I've been doing body by science and I think it's helping. But when I go out like last night and get a sonic milkshake on app rice, I'm not sure the weightlifting offsets that. So yeah, I am not Perfect, but here's what I'll tell you my tips are, and hopefully I will get into them by July 1st in my personal life, and that after picture will get better and better and better. So it's really a, actually a super simple process. You cut out all processed foods. Try to eat only whole foods. Try to eat animal-based whole foods. That basically means anything that had a face on it or came with from something that had a face on it is okay to eat, as long as it's not changed by processing. Now you might say, well, cheese is processed and there are multiple types of cheese. There's hard cheese, there's soft cheese, and there's American processed cheese. You probably don't want to do the processed. You probably don't want to che do cheese a lot, period. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Let me finish this up. So I like to prioritize whole foods, i.e. steak, chicken, fish, eggs, bacon, pork, you know, any of that's fine. Shrimp, crab legs. In fact, Food Lion has crab legs for six ninety nine pounds. So I may have to see, maybe I think they'll steam them for you in the store. So I may go get a couple pounds of those and have a, because you cannot find them anywhere, hardly now. I think there's a couple places if you're willing to pay $60 for dinner that you could get get all you could eat crab legs, but they're at the beach or in Las Vegas. Excuse me, I'm gonna grab a sip here. Eventually, I'm gonna have to get rid of that Diet Mountain Dew too, <laughs> but the last 5% is the hardest. Okay, so whole foods, you want to go higher fat. Yeah, I don't have time to explain that today, but fat that you eat, does not turn into fat in your body. That is another lie that we have to change with unconventional strategies. They're not even really related. You need to prioritize animal-based protein. You need to get out in the sun without sunscreen, 
without being covered up. If you get rid of the seed oils, which are vegetable oils, again, a processed food, then most people that cut out seed oils don't burn, even though they used to burn. And that's just an ana anecdotal evidence that you won't hear on the mainstream media. Another unconventional healthy living tip. Okay, get in the sunlight as often as possible. Take your shoes off if you can. Sit out in the grass. Get as much skin on the ground as you can. That's called earthing. And I've tried to do it here, but there's not a lot of grass. And if I take the dog, she digs a hole and kicks dirt all over me, which is okay as far as earthing goes. But that basically, oops, I'm hitting the tripod. That basically, when lightning, the concept is when stri lightning strikes the earth, the earth becomes positively charged. When you touch it or you touch your dog that's touching it, those the negative charge comes out of your body into the earth. You know how electricity works, positive and negative, all that stuff. And it just helps you feel better, get healthier. So anyway, go outside, get as much skin on the ground as you can. Apparently, concrete does allow some of it to pass through asphalt does not so but you really don't want to be walking barefoot in major cities because of broken glass nails thumbtacks whatever you could maybe get do more harm than good so and it's hard to find I, that's why i really like to go to one reason i really like to go to the beach i think it makes us all feel better to be in the seawater or in the sand barefoot because we are getting the benefit of that earthing whether, or grounding, some people call it, whether we know it or not. At this point, I don't recommend the grounding sheets and the grounding mat, mats you can stand on at your computer. But get fresh air, lower your stress, get adequate sleep, which most people recommend is at least eight hours a night. And if you don't know how to get eight hours of sleep or you can't get eight hours of sleep because of your stress, work on that as best you can. I may do a video on that at some point. Definitely be animal based and drink a lot of water. So those are my, that's part of the reason this channel is called Unconventional Healthy Living Strategies. And that's where I am moving more and more to every day to get healthy. I'm sorry, to lose weight, to get healthy. There are so many an antidotes, antidotes, however you say it, antidotal evidence that losing weight does improve your health improves your quality of life and could even improve your longevity. I honestly do believe that carbohydrates, which turn into sugar in your body are, and seed oils combined, you know, in nature, you never have fat and sugar together. Never, ever. There's no fat in an orange. There's no fat in a banana. There's just sugar <laughs> in a piece of steak. There's no sugar, there's fat and protein. So we have gotten so, so smart, we're smarter than nature. You know, we gotta put sugar and fat together like a, a Krispy Kreme donut. That's nothing but sugar and fat together and it packs right onto the waist or wherever you carry it, maybe the rear end. <laughs> but most men, it's the belly. A lot of women, it's the rear end. So if you don't combine stuff that nature doesn't want together, Unconventional living, you know, today we think it has to come out of a box. Actually, if it has a barcode on it, you're best not to buy it. So I'm going to sign off for now. There is a little red, white, and blue button in this corner. Click on that. It'll take you to my scribe board. I've learned how to put a link down in the show notes that will actually take you back to this channel and ask you if you subscribe. So if you're on a TV or somewhere where you don't have that button, get on a machine, a device, I guess we call them devices these days, where you can go read the description and click on that link that looks like a bunch of gobbledygook, but somewhere in it says subscribe. It'll take you to my channel. It'll ask you if you want to subscribe and give you a button. You can click there. I really need more subscribers so I can get this word out. And don't forget to share this if it has hit a point with you that makes sense. Of course, you can always like or dislike the little thumbs up, thumb down there. And please comment. Let me know you're here. Let me know somebody's listening. Thank you. God bless and bye-bye.